Hey boaters, Keith McGowan here. I am the Outboard Dad here to help you have a better boating experience. My used outboard motor buying guide is for sale on Amazon for $20. I'm offering now for a limited time. If you send me an email with proof of purchase at Keith at OutboardDad.com, I will offer you a free half hour session over the phone. Love talking to you guys and helping you out with your motors or making sure you're making a good, sensible purchase. So pick up my buying guide. It will teach you the things you need to know so that you don't become one of those people who bought a boat and the motor's no good. Set up with my drill. Have my 100 grit stones in there. So I'm just looking to clean it up. I'm not looking to wear away at the cylinder. I'm hoping to get maybe a thousandths out of it. If I can get all these cylinders even, and I'm only at six, I think it was six and a half at one spot, and I can get this to seven thousandths, that's a pretty good rebuild for in, in my boat. Actually, I don't try and build my motors too tight. I try to make them a little bit looser. Now, I'm going to get some opinions for that, and I want to hear your opinions. Tell me what you've done and what you've experienced, because I want to know what works best for you. This is what's worked best for me, because I have more longevity out of my motors. So I'm going to get this in the cylinder and just work it a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy with it. I'm going to adjust it. So there's an adjustment here I turn to make my stones go out further. It's kind of a finer adjustment so that I can feel the tension on it. And then I'll just work it a little bit. You'll see how it goes. So I'm going to tighten this up a little bit so I feel it's tight. Just a little bit, nothing crazy. Mm, might be a little too tight. I'm going to back it off a little bit. Now I'm just going to work this back and forth. I cleaned it out with a rag. There's no oil in here. You've Most times you've seen honing stones on those YouTube videos with the big machine. They're oiling like crazy. I actually want to do this dry to start with because I'll remove a little bit more material a little faster. Right now I'm not too concerned about that. I didn't make it super dry because a little bit of oil may actually help with this because I'm just looking to take those aluminum deposits off of the cylinder that are on there as well as clean up any fine scratches. So let's clean it up a little bit. I'm going to do both sides just a little bit, shine my flashlight in there and let's see what it looks like. Notice I'm spending a little time in the bottom of the cylinder. I want to make sure I'm getting it evenly. Now let's do the other side a little bit. Now I can also feel when one of these cylinders is out of round. A half a thousandths is a little tough to feel. On the Mercury motor, I would think I was one and a half thousandths out of round. So you could feel the boom, 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 boom of the tool as it was going through until I wore down enough of the metal that it evened out and it was a complete round cylinder then. So let's see what this one feels like. This one you feel a little skipping. I think this one had a little more aluminum on the cylinders. Let's see what it looks like. Definitely some gouges I can already see. So as I shine my light in here, you can see the gouge right in here. It's not major, I can barely feel it. I still see some aluminum on the walls, but I still see some, right? So this, this definitely needs to be taken down further. This one over here, similar in the same spots near the exhaust, which is typical. But the rest of it doesn't look too bad, does it? And of course, at the top, we can see a little more. So I'm going to go ahead and just grind away at this a little bit tougher. Not going to go too crazy. And see what we can do. We did a little reading here, looking at our looper motors and looking at our specifications. So our motors, our looper motor, says 105 to 175. Our standard bore is 3.5995. So we'll take a look at our, micro, our micrometer here and see where we're at to see if it's oversized. We can go 4 thousandths larger than that based on the spec. So it's actually between 3.5995 and 3.6005 is what it's saying. So that gives us about a half a thousandths difference between pistons from the manufacturer. That's pretty close tolerance. And oversized, we can go 0.004, so that's four thousandths of an inch over. 
of the cleaning up I did on this cylinder, I went at it a little bit harder. I'm already at seven thousandths. So I'm already two thousandths more, so I could go another, I wouldn't go more than another thousandths because I need to hone after that. And I'm probably gonna take at least a half a thousandths off of that. So we're getting really close, but I still have some scratches in there. So let's take a look at our micrometer and see where, where exactly we're at or if this has been rebuilt before. Upon further inspection, I realized I was on the wrong page. I needed to be on the 90 degree, I was on the 60 degree, 120 to 140 horsepower engine, because when I looked at my piston size and I looked at it, I said, wow, that that's, looks oversized. And it is oversized compared to the wrong engine I was looking at in the book. The number when I looked up is a standard size piston. So I'll check the rest of the pistons, but I'm sure they're, they are the same because I, my bore size is not different on any of them. So going back now to my book, making sure I'm looking at the right page in the book. My cylinder bore 3.5845 to 3.6855 with a 0.04004, so that's four thousandths max oversize limit. We're at 2,000 now and haven't got all the scratches out of it. My out of round is 004. We're within a, a half a thousandths uh, between that, so we're, we're good there. And that's going to be cleaned up a little bit. My taper, no more than 0.002. Isn't that interesting? Which is what I talked about to make sure that bottom of that cylinder is good. So we're going to look at this a little deeper. I'm going to take a little bit more off of these cylinder walls, hoping that I don't have to go oversized. But if I do, it's not a big deal. I have to buy the pistons anyway. So I'd rather be closer. I'm going to get all the scratches out. We're going to measure and let's see where we're at. So let's take a close look at where we're at. I went at it pretty good. And I still don't have all the scratches out. So I'm at now just under eight thousandths. And I'm at nine thousandths on this one. So let's take a closer look inside at what we, what we got. Now we know where we stand, right? Now we know we have to open up these two cylinders past what standard is going to be. Now I'm going to flip the block over. Before I do that, I'm going to grind away more. Those one scratches that you saw there, the last set that we saw on that bottom cylinder, starboard side, that's kind of deep there. So I'm going to grind away at that until we get it really, really fine or gone. And then I'm going to measure to see how many thousandths we went over. I'm going to call my buddies over at Pro Marine USA and get a gasket kit and get a piston kit with new rings. But I want to check this side first. I just want to hone it lightly with that hundred and make sure there's no scratches. Sometimes you don't see them until you start to hone. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this block over. First, I'm gonna take a little more out of these two cylinders and see exactly where I'm at, record it, write it down to see how many thousandths I went over. I think I'm gonna to need to be at 10, 12 thousandths, which our piston wall clearance on the other one was five thousandths. So if I'm at 12 thousandths, that is seven thousandths too big. So a 20 over will do it. A 10 over piston will probably do it. We'll have to see what Pro Marine has. It might have to go to 30. Sometimes that's the only uh, size that they have depending on the brand of piston. We did the Vertex pistons over with the Mercury. So continue watching. We're gonna continue this boring and honing. It's detailed and I wanna make sure we don't miss anything. So please, if you have any questions, please send them my way. Send me any comments, what you're thinking or any advice. I've gotten some great advice from some OMC guys out there that have helped me. You know, we, we all, nobody knows everything and we can all use to learn more tips and tricks to help us have a better boating experience. And that's what we're all about here at the Outboard Dad channel. So hope to see you soon and we'll continue on with this rebuild. Have a great night.